morning, guys. You all know me. My name is Chantal Boerta. I'm a recruitment strategist and coach. And today I'm chatting to one of my success stories on my video live. Um, morning, Carl. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So just to give you guys an introduction, you know how much I love success stories. I always shout from the rooftops when there's a success story. And of course, Carl is one of my most recent success stories. I say mine, but the work he did was his work. I just gave him a little bit of a kick where he needed it, perhaps. <laughs> so just to give you an introduction, Carl studied finance. He wanted to go into, you know, rating with analysts and financial analysts and all sorts of convoluted things. He went over to China. He started teaching. He was in academia for some years, came back from China with the lockdown. And of course, he's got this massive gap in his career from finance, no mean feat with the state of the job market in South Africa at the moment, and he joined my masterclass. I gave him a couple of strategic tips and tools, and you know what, within, how long was it, Carl? Three months, two months? It was about a three-month uh, job search I did, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it was really quick. It was really quick. Carl actually said to me a few weeks ago, he said to me, I'm going to give it three months and then I'm going to call it quits. And I thought, you can't do that. It's too short. No, so three months, I'll, I'll go back to China and I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, <laughs> ready for it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Guys, I'm going to ask Carl to share his story. But I think for me, what I wanted to point out is there's three things that stood out for me in his story. Number one, he accessed the hidden job market and he used networking and he was creative about it. Number two, he was very, very strategic in terms of searching and identifying the companies he wanted to work for. Mm -hmm. And finally, he not only differentiated himself and his application, but he was different in how he tackled this project. So enough from me, Carl, tell us how you did it. Give us a couple of highlights in terms of how you found this job. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, uh, I think the, the main thing is to talk about like the frustration I had uh, beforehand because so I had you know I have the qualifications I got a master's uh, master degree and then I had prior financial experience I've worked as an accountant uh, or more of a bookkeeper mm -hmm. I've worked also as a banker before so it wasn't like I had I was starting from zero if you know what I mean and I just noticed that when I was applying to positions uh, I was getting these these responses that just didn't make sense in my head it's like oh you're underqualified you don't do a skills mismatch yeah. you don't think you you know the right person for the job sort of thing and it just frustrated the heck out of me and i just noticed that if i applied through the normal job portals so i mentioned this to you the other day i applied to 10 jobs one day yeah. and the next day on the dot i got rejected from 10 jobs and automated systems <laughs> yes and so before yeah, before your class, I, you know, it's your self-worth. You're like, oh, geez, I'm just, you know, it, it must be what they say. It must be true, you know. But um, I guess what was nice is your, your course cleared that up a bit, that it's their systems that are busy re automatically rejecting for a variety of reasons from uh, possible mismatches to just your CV not being formatted correctly. So, so I mean, that was a big frustration for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually when I started searching for help with, with recruitment. How do I actually do this? Because I was like, it is a brick wall. Yeah. It's awful, you know. Um, but then what happened was, so after I'd done your, your course, we've gone through, uh, gone through the month of course, I actually didn't apply during those four weeks because I wanted to yeah. get all the knowledge and then I'll go do it because I was tired of hitting brick walls. I was so sick of it. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so sick of it. Um, and then what I, I did was I took a kind of a strategy where I didn't apply at all through careers portals at all. What I did was I, I would see a position and then I'd go on LinkedIn, I'd engage with the guys. Uh, and my favorite thing to do was to send them a, a video with Loom. And so, and that got lots of traction. It got guys very interested. There was one guy, the academic guy, he was working as a, a credit risk analyst at one of the big banks. And so I found a paper he had written. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I downloaded his paper, read it, critiqued it. And then I said how I think he could make it better in a very friendly way and how he could, you know, how he could go further with his research. And if he wants to do it with me, I'd actually be keen to do it with him. But it was more of an interest then. 
Yeah. So I critiqued his paper. He sent me back a LinkedIn message. He says, that's the best message I've ever received. Wow. Says, Send me your CV, I'll put it through. And so he did, and nothing did materialize from it. But it was just, you know, getting like some response was so much better than the computer saying rejected, rejected, rejected. So. And then you also start feeling validated. You start being reminded that you are valuable and you are worth something. Yeah, yeah, and you can connect with somebody on a one-to-one -one basis, Correct. and you can see that you actually you know you would be fitted for for the position. It's just getting behind the the recruitment yeah. wall <laughs> is quite difficult to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I liked with yours, which uh, actually other people are very hesitant towards, it is to actually be very pushy, to actually be very creative, to actually kind of go for it, go kind of completely out of the normal realm. Correct. People seem to think that that's something you shouldn't do. It's like that's not societally true. acceptable. So then I started going there in person. I started yeah. calling the recruiters. Uh, if I could find the personal number, I'd call them on the personal number. You know, if I could find a way into the building, like I said, with this job that I got, I pretended to be the delivery boy. I love yeah. that story. Yeah. I'm going to tell that for years. You know this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you how I did that. So, the, uh, the more, more, in more detail, so I took a brown envelope with my CV, okay. and so I was quite lucky. I had a paper that I published, and I put that in as well. Yeah. And then I actually put a USB drive with a video inside the, the paper, and I wrote the company's details. Amazing. So I got to reception. You know they could be sticky. Yes. And I said to them, I'm going to this company, da 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 da. And they said, Okay, well, what for? And I said, I'm here to deliver a parcel. I can't you see da? Here's a parcel. And they're like, oh, okay, you know. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really supposed to be there. Sure. And they, they let me in and I got up and I, it's, they just moved and I knocked on the door. And the next thing I know, the CIO comes out. And so the next time I'm talking to the CIO, I say, for, for this job, I actually said, I just want to intern okay. at this company. Yeah. And he liked my story. He wanted to know about you know, why I wanted to intern there, what I wanted to do. And then he mentioned, well, we had this job that closed, but we're still looking for people at the moment. And he said, why don't you apply for that? And I said, yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan. I think you, you're a man with good ideas, you know. <laughs> and then, then I went from there, you know. So it was real nice doing some external stuff, connecting with the people one-to-one -one versus the computers as usual, yeah. Absolutely. Well, well done, Carl. You know what? I'm so proud of you. You start on 1st of November, not so. 1st November. Yeah, Fantastic. that's right. Fantastic. I'm really, really proud of you. You know what else I wanted to ask you is we spoke a little bit yesterday about the cliches in the job market. And, and you mentioned a few cliches that you had overcome. Would you share with us a few of those cliches? Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, there was quite a, quite a few that I mm -hmm. felt myself I had broken myself which was the, the academia so i i have never done financial analysis in a professional setting correct but i broke from only have academic background i used to be an economics teacher then english teacher then economics teacher again yes. and now i've broken into a lovely financial position uh so i did that move but then also did it uh after not being in corporate for going on three years, eight months, nearly four years now. Really? And then also, this is post, not post-COVID, but mm. after the big initial wave we had, we've sure. got the biggest economic downturn now, like worst job losses uh, in I don't know how long. And so for me, that was a big one as well, um, is, you know, finding, a, finding work during, during the downturn. Um, so those are some of the big ones that were kind of like, holding me back big time Correct. Correct. Um, and you know yeah. what, what i also found interesting in our chat yesterday is you, you spoke to me about mindset and you said how you know the mindset in south africa with COVID at the moment and like you said the current economic outlook so many people are saying there are no opportunities but you came in and you saw opportunity everywhere and even as you went through the master class you just embraced it and you were like i am going to do this i'm going to make this happen and i really believe that plays in you know in, in a big way no no i i think it definitely did i think uh, for me it was kind of a uh i hadn't seen the end result 
uh, what's it again? It's it seems impossible until it's done. It's the quote, right? Absolutely. I think that's Nelson Mandela, as far as I understand. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, so just getting past that that rut. Because sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like, this is just useless. Why am I even trying? You know, <laughs> there's, there's no point. You know, because you can't see the end result. Yes. But then, yes. if you you know, if you navigate on a more personal level with these people. Yeah. then it becomes much more fun. Absolutely. And it, and it becomes yeah. like a game. It, it's, it's a game. It's like chess, exactly. as you, you describe the process, which is amazing. It, and it's much nicer. Yeah. yeah. You, it's for fun. You're playing for fun. You're going to go meet the people. Mm-hmm. You rock up a reception. You talk to the receptionist. You say, oh, I heard that there's this position. Uh, who's the recruiter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you like, you know, you, you maybe like talk with a little bit of crack with the, the receptionist. And then you see what she can give you. Da, 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 da. He said, oh, do you mind giving me a number for, da, 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 you know? And that's, that's so much more fun than sitting on your computer and like, to send. Pushing like, buttons and hoping and praying. You know exactly. what? How I can't agree with you more. And it's a big, big component of what I teach. Be different. Stand out in your application. Just do things differently. Shatter the barriers because there's no rule that says that you can't, which is amazing. Yeah. So, of course, yeah. I'm going to wrap this up with one final word did you believe that the master class added value to your job search team oh yeah 110 percent 110 percent it was little little tidbits throughout the four weeks all put together Amazing. with a bit of creativity Amazing. 110 that makes my heart sing you know what i am so happy to have been instrumental in changing your life and seeing you reach your dreams so kyle yeah. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. I really, really appreciate it. And you and I are going to stay in touch for a long, long time, my friend. (laughs) Sounds good. Thanks so much, Michelle. Awesome.